and you want to try a triple radiator setup, like I will attempt, although I probably wouldn't recommend doing so because I think it's going to be an extremely tight fit. Welcome back to part two of this MKSM2 build. We have a few things that we want to cover today. The first one being these air compression pneumatic fittings. I've seen them in a couple builds online and they always look very clean, very minimal. And that's exactly the type of look that we're going for with this build. Secondly, we want to maximize the cooling performance because of course we're working in a very small case uh, with some very high-end parts. So we want to keep them as cool as possible while keeping them as quiet as possible. And with that, we're ready to start building. But first, we have to drain and disassemble the old loop. And now that we've drained and disassembled the old loop, we can go ahead and have a look at which parts we're going to be using in the new build. As a centerpiece of our build, we're going with the new X870i by Asus, which really looks amazing and fits our build perfectly. For the CPU, we're going with the 7800 X3D, which was, up until a few weeks ago, the best gaming CPU out there. For the RAM, we went with 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z CL30 6000. We've got an RTX 3090 FE with an EK water block. It used to have an active backplate in our last build, but as you might have seen, we had to disassemble it to fit with the ITX motherboard. Unfortunately, we've tried the triple radiator setup and it just doesn't fit. This current GPU is about five millimeters too big and the radiator just doesn't fit underneath it. It's unfortunate and when the 5090 comes out, we're gonna try this again. But for now, we're gonna use a full size 45 millimeter radiator on the side with full size fans, both on top and on the side and I'm pretty sure this will give us plenty of cooling performance. As we've said, we're trying to maximize the cooling performance, so we've gone with the best possible fan setup while trying to keep the all black look, of course. On the side radiator here, we've got the new Noctua G2 140mm fans, which are the best performing fan out there. The reason I didn't put them on top is because they would ruin the all black aesthetic that we have going on here. So we've got the second best option, which are these latest Be Quiet, um, which just do a great job as well. They're not as good as Noctuas, but they work just fine. And of course, you have to admit, it looks much better. For the CPU block, we've gone with the Velocity 2 by EK. Uh, it has a built-in reservoir, which makes filling the loop a lot easier. And on top, we have the Alpha Cool HPE Slim Radiator. It's 20 millimeters thick, and together with these full-sized fans, this is really the max setup we can do on top. We're gonna to use this temperature sensor, which is mounted on top of the Velocity 2 water block to control our fan speeds based on the water temperature, which is gonna keep this build as quiet as possible. Thank you. 
I can already hear the comments. 600 watt power supply for 3090. Um, I know. However, this isn't just any power supply. This is the SF600 Platinum by Corsair, which of course is an amazing SFF power supply. And it delivers just enough power to even overclock both the CPU and the GPU in this case. We have some custom power supply cables as well, which is really a must if you're building in an SFF case. It makes cable management so much easier. You don't have to tuck away any excess cable. The cable just has the perfect length. We've also gone for the Noctua fan controller mounted on the side of the PSU, which really makes cable management a lot easier, as well as it allows us to rewire the pump to connect directly to the fan controller. We've really gone the extra mile with this build. It's the first time that I've ever done any custom cabling. I've rewired the pump, rewired every fan. I've even rewired the temperature sensor to be the perfect length so we don't have any slack on the cable. Wow, I have to say I'm really positively surprised by the cooling performance of this case which is two radiators. It's almost matching the temperatures that I had in my previous tower, which had three radiators. And all of this was staying extremely quiet. I mean, I have this case next to me on my desk, and even without headphones, I can barely hear any sound. Stay tuned for part three, where we'll have an in-depth look at this CPU's performance versus the new 9800 X3D, but until then, please let me know if you guys have a name for the build in the comments below. See you soon. <laughs>